So good afternoon and welcome to the penultimate game of the Masters World Cup. Out here at Hartley LA, it is the women's over 45 division and it is the final between Argentina and England. It is probably going to be some of the best hockey that you have seen all week long. It's this Argentinian side that comes into the final having scored 13 goals. England, they come in having scored seven. So both sides know their way into the circle. Both sides know how to get the ball into the back of the net. But this is finals hockey. Whatever has happened in the tournament up until this point means absolutely nothing. It's what can you do in the four quarters. That's going to determine whether you go home with a gold medal or a silver. So last minute preparations from both sides as they huddle on either side of the pitch. A great atmosphere here. A few thousand people in here to watch this final day of the Masters World Cup here in Cape Town. Where else would you want to be than in Cape Town? I think all the players from all over the world have really enjoyed their stay here over this time and culminates with the World Cup final, the over 45 women's final here at the Hartley Vale Stadium. It's England playing in white and Argentina in blue from left to right into quite a stiff southeaster. England will have the wind at their backs this first half. It is England who will have the push off. And the game is indeed underway. Clap. The captain. What does England side do really well is keep the ball. We've seen it all tournament long. Susie Cap still uh, tries to get to the stop onto the ball a lot of the times and get something going, get something sparked. Uh, Ryan Crisp, the right half, she loves a little overlap, loves a little run down the outside. So it's how do Argentina nullify those type of players for England? Well, Leonard under pressure from England from the onset in the midfield. Argentinian players flood that midfield area and just close down centre midfield space and time on the ball. So, good little mazy run here. And Moya, she wins a hit outside the D for Argentina. So, the over 50s. England side beat Argentina in their final. So more possession for Argentina inside English territory. It's Torres with the ball now. Works away to the byline. She plays it flat but uh, Ball hadn't gone five meters. So, Led Peter plays it out to Lloyd. A little high press now from Argentina as they. Quite a lot of pressure on Led Peter. Leonard comes deep for the, the one two. Leadbeater looks to play Bond up higher, up the field, the number nine for England. Oh, lovely little reverse stick space but from Galvin, but she just can't gather the ball. She tries to just get in behind the little press, little pocket that England try and ploy in the midfield. This is what England do really well. They press high up in the field, turn the ball over, in and around the 23, and then take the attack to the opposition. It's worked well for them all tournament long. I don't see them changing that tactic. So they're fairly high, and they are fairly flat in their press. Ball goes through quite easily to Moya. 
And a lovely little run from the number 10, Rosetto. He passes it on to Moya, back to Moya. So, an amazing run now. Will she set up the hit? Moya still with the ball, just loses it. So, England come out via Jones to McCabe. McCabe carries and looks for the cross and the touch from Bond. Bond just struggling to get ahead of her marker. England quite happy for the Argentinians to play in those wide outlet areas as they step and shift into space and congest areas and better. Argentina quite happy to hang off at this stage and just cover ground and angles. Ball played in and nicely thread through by Jones. McCabe does well to get in on in front of a marker but unfortunately it just comes off a stick and free hit to Argentina. So these sides Murray played earlier on in the uh, tournament in the ladies 45 division just six teams competed. Uh, these two sides met on the adjacent field on Hartleville B and that game ended in a two-all draw. So if you Coming into a game, even on even keel, this is probably as even as you can get. Neither side got the upper hand in the first game. So a chance then for one of these sides to really take the bull by the horns and really take the attack to the opposition and grab some uh, early inroads. As we saw with the men's over 50s final now, which sort of individual brilliance that changes a game where the Germany and and and. Tackles coming. Five meters out, five meters out, and Stick. She just got herself into got such a good position up front there for Argentina. Can't gather. Lloyd goes cross field. Lots of space. Out wide. And it's a great ball to McCabe. Who gets it to Burns. Back to McCabe. Good flat stick tackle from Ramos. Well, I think it's, sorry, Moya. The Argentinian midfield. They got that wrong as well. It's a queerer. <laughs> from we'll Alvon. We'll get there. Plays and no ways and no money. There's England coming to the circle. Pull back from McCabe. Open pulls on the far side. 
finds all the charms, and Arnaud is able to uh, reach the world. Ball in behind. Ryan Crisp, who tries to just throw it down the line. Long corner one. Ryan Crisp still on the ball. Makes good connection with Jones. Jones will turn. Wins the hit. Ryan Crisp starts again. Just to clap, umpire says no. Put the ball on the right spot. No unfair advantage gained. So, still possession for England. They find themselves in the congested area, so they decide to draw Argentina out. Ledbetter just struggles to take, but it's mopped up. Ledbetter gets it back again. Leonard. McCabe had made the cross run, just couldn't gather. First touch just eludes there as the ball bobbles over his stick. And it seems as though Argentina are pretty happy to uh, sit back and allow England to play the ball. Argentina relying on their defensive system, having full trust in their defensive systems to uh, ensure that they can keep England at bay. England holding possession pretty well, they're moving the point of attack. They're not always just going into the congested areas, using the space intelligently. So Coombs on the ball. To Clap. Clap under pressure. Now to Led Beater. Lloyd looks for McCabe. Argentina win the hit. This has got to be a hard grind for Argentina. Absorb as much as you can. And then, as uh, perhaps as England gets tired later on, try and pounce. But this is a good run from uh, Argentina into the deep. Plenty of uh, speed uh, in the legs of uh, Paulasso. So, ball in. Takes a deflection of the stick of Ryan Crisp and will be a long corner. But what a fantastic breakout that was from Argentina. And that's perhaps the game plan. Sit back, absorb as much as they can, send a long ball because they know that Paul Lasso has got plenty of speed on her and will be able to reach those balls thrown into the far corners. Well, the England defence have just almost forgot about Paul Lasso high up on the baseline. She starts narrow and then runs wide. Ball fired in. That's a goal! A sucker punch out of nowhere! England's defence went to sleep on that one. Aguirre takes the uh, free hit very quickly, made a bit of a run, and good work from the number 15, Moya, to fill the critical area of the P-spot. It almost seemed as though the ball got passed across in slow motion, got the touch from Moya's stick, and beats Billington in the England goal. Well, the defence is poor from England. The girls, they don't get in between the ball and the goals. No one fills that space. And the ball is played on the diagonal angle, which is almost criminal to allow that to go into the nine-yard area, onto the P-flick spot. No one challenges uh, Moya on the ball either. And it's a tame deflection and in the goals. So, as you say, almost go to sleep, but it's England come back. It's the number nine, Bond, who has the potential to score. And it runs free, and England are back through Emma Jones. Sorry, Gemma Jones. 
And this game has most certainly opened up. The uh, Argentinian supporters have barely started singing for in celebration of the Argentinian goal. And back come England immediately from the restart. Get the ball all the way in. And again, filling the critical areas. Makes it easy for Jones to level matters. Well, Bond made the initial turn and engaged the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper makes the save for Argentina on now. And, uh, and then the ball just falls loose and, well, Gemma Jones does the rest. So we're back on level pegging here at Hartley Vale. Less than four minutes left in this first quarter. Plenty of drama, a couple of missed opportunities for England. but And then they go down 1-0, surprisingly, fight their way within a minute back to the level terms with Argentina. Argentina score through Daniela Moya with a deflection goal. Gemma Jones finds herself in a good position to ram it home for England. The Argentinian goal obviously coming completely against the runner player was all England. Before that, England camping themselves inside the Argentinian territory. One long ball forward. And uh, Paulasso winning a long corner and then Argentina scoring. Taking well, the lead completely against the run of play. But then, just as we said, England going to sleep uh, inside uh, the circle to concede that goal. Argentina went to sleep from the restart. So it's Moya, the goal scorer, back on the drive to the byline. Looks to fire in again. Bayamolo, it's a penalty stroke. Paulasso. Wins the ball, fires it in, and it must have hit the last line of defence. Is that right? Yep, 100%. It got underneath uh, Billington, her, the uh, shot from Paul Lasso. Underneath Billington, and one of the defenders on the line hits her on the foot. And uh, as we do know, a clear-cut scoring opportunity comes off any part of a defender's body on the line. And it will be a short corner. So the captain of Argentina, Jerry Codd, will uh, step up. In fact, she's the one of the co-captains of Argentina. I've listed uh, two captains in their, uh, in their side. So, what can Jerry Codd do? Can she retain and regain the lead for Argentina? Or will Burlington come up trumps? It's low and Burlington makes the save! Low to the left-hand side. She sticks the left boot out. And Billington ensures that England do not trail in this game again. So, a fantastic save from Billington. The left foot. One must say that Jerry Codd just didn't get enough on that penalty stroke. Sometimes you get up there and you're almost in two minds of what to do. And she was looking to play it onto the glove side or the left foot side of Billington, but just doesn't get enough power on that flick. So England could find themselves a little bit annoyed with themselves. They got themselves back into the game after some poor defense. And then to concede a penalty stroke, they could have gone into this this. Uh, First quarter break, 2-1 down. So they're just a little bit guilty of going to sleep at the best of times, even though they have been dominant. And a lovely little run coming in here. Good work from Galvan. Gets it to Moya. Changing direction back to the left-hand side, Aguirre. Good ball forward for Argentina. Nice little turn and roll from Rosetto. Into the circle for Argentina. Fantastic save from Clap. The England captain. Standing firm in defense for her side, but taken quickly by Aguirre. Smashes it in, it's loose in the circle, and free hit one by England. So, we're almost into the final minutes. Plenty of drama out here in this first quarter. Ball back to Lloyd. Lloyd scans ahead. Fortunately, finds the stick of Moya and keeps possession for England. 
Ball gets played down the line. Moya regathers. And now will drive. The final 40 odd seconds. It's been a frenetic opening quarter here. Good work for Argentina. Moya gets the uh, foot of Lloyd. So with 20 seconds to go, well, Argentina is just going to be happy to uh, go to the break. Not five. Good call from the umpire, Aguirre. Not five as uh, Torres made the ball live. So that should be that. That should end the uh, opening quarter of uh, this final in the women's over 45 division. It is Argentina one, England one. Do not go anywhere. We'll take a short break before the action continues. That waiting for the gun, the nerves are just too much, thinking about what is about to go down. There goes the horn to start the race. No, I think it's really amazing. And now the whole setup and people are dressed up. We're giving something, I think, to the people is just fantastic. The support on the side of the road is, is second to none, and that gives you the extra oomph. Thoroughly enjoyed it. The scenery is beyond what I could imagine. I, I seriously enjoyed it. I met so many wonderful people on the way. Really enjoying Cape Town. People seem to really appreciate artwork here, which is really nice. Come and visit Cape Town. We are waiting for you with open arms. We welcome you here. This will remain a city of hope and opportunity for everyone, not just in Cape Town, but around the country and the world. And he takes the tape. Cape Town is open, safe, and ready to host you. England won. Nothing to separate the teams. Although, on the balance of play and on the chances created, Argentina could have gone into the break with a 2 1 lead, but denied by a penalty stroke save by Billington in the England goal. The Wilkins plays a little reverse stick pass down to Day. Can't find it. England win again. The ball. Clap in the midfield. Argentina just slow down proceedings and look to go high. Well picked up. Moya just loses the ball as she tries to look for support from Rosetto. England back, Bond, little one touch. They carry strongly on the right hand side, not many options for her. So back she'll come to Jones. Big ball across, looking for Wilkins on the far post. Unable to uh, find the end of the English stick. A good passage of play from England, turning defense into attack in the blink of an eye. Now, Wilkins does quite well. She goes in on the post, draws her defender and then comes out with the lead run, but the ball just doesn't come to her. Again, a really slow start from Argentina. And again, they look for that long ball. Just oh, really? eludes Day. Day had thought that Carrezo would have stopped that ball. Doesn't continue a run. So Jerry Codd, who missed the penalty corner for, sorry, penalty stroke for Argentina, retakes 
finds a good eye in the middle to Galvin, who smartly moves down the middle to Aguera. Some skillful players in the side. Happy to take players on to try and eliminate. Happy to run direct as well. Big ball for Argentina. But a dangerous situation created. And the England will come away with it. It's good uh, work from Ledbetter for England, stepping up to put pressure on Mayo and create that uh, dangerous situation. But big ball now for England on the right hand side. Burns can't seem to get control of it, so Osuna comes away with it. Big pass across. Good work from Osuna to find Torres on this uh, right hand side, and she's got some space to work with. Bit of a wild pass, looking for the ever present Paulosso. Who's uh, certainly full of running. And when you've got uh, speed like that up front, Murray, it's uh, pretty easy for you just to throw the ball forward, knowing that she'll make those reads for you. Yeah, as I said earlier, she likes to start narrow and run laterally across and get into those wide areas. But there she's also working back and trying to collect ball. So, clap from the wide ball to find Wilkins. Sorry, Sparry out wide. Torres in a bit of space. Good stepping up from England. That's good pressure. But they do spill the ball again. So Torres comes away with it and just evades uh, Moya in midfield. Clap now, deciding to hold on to possession as she sends it to Bell. And England happy just to settle things a little bit. Now, this is good to see. England are not wanting to match Argentina's fast-paced game. They are happy to uh, just keep the ball and be patient in their build-up, which is nice to see that England got the presence of mind to play their game. Well, I thought there they could have just held it for a, a few more passages of play, but they decide to go for that long ball out wide. Looking for Sparry. So Galvin will restart for Argentina. Little run coming in from Aguera. The ball is played down the line. Won by Argentina. Counter attacks on Torres is wide. Torres will carry. Fire it in. Finds the foot of Ledbetter. Peter, sorry. Aguirre smashes it again. This time hitting the foot of a clap. Will be another reward to Aguirre. Gets it going early. It was her ball into the circle early on that got the Argentina ahead. Galvan back to Aguirre. Into the circle she goes, looks for the foot, and uh, Torres carrying that run through, just a bit too far ahead of her, but that Argentinian attack will come to naught. So good patient defence from England, who don't fly in. Argentina, skillful players, they love English players to fly in, win some corners, but England just hold nicely, they hold the space well, and will step late with flat sticks. But now they come out of there and it's Burns who tries to hold possession up for England. Big ball from Combs. Right through goes Combs. Now, it's not often that we've seen through this week England employing that long ball. It's usually a good little build up into midfield to the likes of Clapp and uh, Leonard in midfield. And then they build it up through the levels. England, not often have they uh, been hitting those long balls. So perhaps just a bit of a change in tactic from England, just perhaps just for a few moments in the final, just to keep Argentina a bit honest. Argentina come back through Galvin. Lovely tackle. Flat one again coming in. Salvi that time. And this clap. Fires long. 
Burns around the outside, looking for support from McCabe. McCabe just struggles to keep up with the pace of that pass. So, under 10 minutes left in the second quarter, it's one all. Paulasso, big ball forward. And as always, the Argentinian striker gets herself onto it. What can she do? She's got uh, support in uh, Moya with her. Moya rolls to the baseline, cuts in field, wins the short corner, pops the ball onto the foot of Salvi. And what a breakaway that was from Argentina, smashing the ball forward. Paulasso getting herself onto the end of it. Presence of mind to hold it up, allowing her teammates to come up in support. It was Moya there in support. Nice little run around down the baseline, pops it onto a foot as easy as you like for well, Argentina. Power loss just plays to her strengths, doesn't she? She knows she can she, she just hold it up. She hasn't got the stick work of some of the midfielders, so she holds it up nicely, lets that support play come in. And they win themselves a penalty corner. So it is Cod at the top of the circle. Cod lays it off. Chance, flick, goal for Argentina! Galvan on the left slip, slots the ball in. But the umpire has called time and she's going to go have a conference. Goals awarded. There was nothing in that. England players chat to the umpire. I'm not sure what they were thinking, what they saw, but it looked like an legitimate goal. Perhaps, buddy, uh, the England defenders felt that that little layoff at the top from Cod could have created a bit of a, a, an obstruction as she's waiting for the ball, at least waiting for the first one to get to her, and then she lays it off. That's probably all that they could have protested. Either that or a goalkeeper being impeded by one of the runners or the injector. But from our point of view, from where we saw it, there seemed to be none of that. Yeah, maybe they thought the injector got in the way of the keeper and that hindered her in being able to save the ball. But good deception at the top of the D by Argentina. They move it one way, slip it left, and they get themselves a lot of time to finish that, that variation. So, 2-1. And here's our friend, Payalasso again, who shows some skills. And goes around the outside on the reverse stick. So, Argentina still with the ball. Play it into the D. Torres looks to win another corner. Good hustle. Gets herself a long corner. Uh, good work from England. Having to scramble as uh, the likes of uh, Paolo Lasso and Torres eliminate the first tackler. So the cover defense has to be in there. They've got to make the tackles. Also ensure that they're protecting their feet. Uh, it's taken quickly by Aguirre. Gets the ball in. It's loose in the circle. But calmness prevails for England, although... A little bit overzealous is Galvan there. Tries to win the ball. And then come away with a big head across. But uh, comes off the uh, stick of Torres. So Cod is able to clean things up. Argentina again. They do well is that they identify very quickly that a certain area is congested. So they bring the ball out and they try another side. And that's really good to see. Well, Argentina have slowed things down. And they're playing stick to stick. They're two one up and they realize they can just hold the ball for longer periods now. They're in the money. They go for the long ball and lose it. And England can try rebuild. England cough it up as well, cheaply. So Torres, winning ball for Argentina. Aguera will hand things over to Cod.
Salvi sends it to the middle to Captain Clapp. Good work by England. Bell with a bit of space and a few options. Decides to come all the way back to Salvi on the left-hand side. Much better spell of possession this for England. Here comes the big ball. Looks for McCabe up front. The marshaled away by Osuna. That's better play from England in the build-up as they manipulate that space, move it into areas, transfer the ball from left to right and right to left. I just feel they go long too early. You need to maybe get Bond coming back or somebody coming back and just playing almost that wall pass into the midfield, keeping that ball for longer before they try and thread that ball. You can see Argentina just backtracking on the angles and just waiting for that long ball to be fired in. Happy to pick off any 50-50 ball. Now there's space on the right-hand side. England use it well. They need to run into those spaces, try create overlaps through the left foot. They do exactly that. Ball to the byline. Burns. Burns wins a long corner. It's the time. It's the time where England need to hit back just before the half-time break. Selby on the left-hand side. We look to play again flat across this D. Ooh, that's a tough call. England, fortunate to get away with that. She almost was shielding the ball. Clap. Restarts. Nicely played to the byline. Good pressure. And it looks like the ball just came off the wrong side of a stick. And Bond loses it and Argentina now will look to clear their lines. They can't. As you mentioned, England have just got to show a bit more patience when they do turn the ball over. That's a classic example. They turn the ball over and then Salvi just throws the ball forward, hoping for a striker to get onto the end of it. When perhaps you could have held it up, get some more players closer, get the links involved and then work the play through Argentina instead of just trying to smash it up and bypass everybody. And basically play against what has been England's strength throughout the tournament. I'd like to see England getting Gemma Jones down the right-hand side, winning ball and actually moving into space, creating overlaps, creating one-twos, getting her higher up the field and really taking on the Argentinians. Good work from Argentina. Down the left-hand side, ball splits loose. Into the circle they go, but dealt with by Salvi, England managing to win the free hit through Combs, taken quickly to Clap. Good turnover from Galvan, nice little one-two as Galvan through the middle, eliminates the first defender, carries a run, does Galvan, throws it in, it's loose and the ball pops up onto uh, Paulasso who tried the little dink over the keeper and uh, just, just Probably hooked it more than uh, she would have wanted. So away it goes. England again, win possession and needlessly hitting away. Yeah, Paul Lassa getting herself into a good space there as the unforced error came from the English defenders. Trying to get a little touch on that over the keeper. Nice pocket by England. Well, the Argentina work their way out of it. Galvan, big ball forward. Nothing there. Salvi makes the interception and then wins the hit. As Carrizo, a bit too eager. As the clock ticks away, we edge our way closer to the final minute of the, the uh, second quarter. Nice little touch forward and fortunately, poor Burns just runs out of real estate. So that's just an e easy turnover. They created space. They've got Gemma Jones into that high inside area and the first touch comes, she could carry it, she could receive it and actually carry it at the Argentinians and then get their high-lying strikers in behind on that sort of wide run to the byline. But they almost force it there. Now Argentina through the middle. Aguirre with a nice little turn, although she exposes the ball to clap. 
Clap makes the jab, tackle, gets the turnover. Now Clap under pressure. Takes a bit of a tumble as the tackle comes in from Rauko. And she will uh, be handed the green card. Much to disdain of the uh, Argentinian fans sitting right next to us. So Bell looks long. So maybe in this third quarter, if Bell and Gemma Jones can move into that space that's being created rather than playing the long ball, England might get better opportunities down that right-hand side to really create havoc for the Argentinians. But hitting that long ball will just play into the Argentinian hands. So that is the way that the second quarter ends as we reach halftime in the women's over 45 category at the moment. It is Argentina 2, England 1. Argentina with a slight advantage. At thehockeysite.com, it's about what happens in the locker room. Thinking about the game. It's about planning and preparation. And about training and improving those skills. Looking at it from different angles. But of course, it's also about teaching them to score and win. Thehockeysite.com. Share the knowledge.
So back we are in this women's over 45 final. Argentina slender 2-1 lead over England and it has been an opening half that has seen both sides with chances. A good old midfield tussle and then the odd breakaway here and there that sparked things and uh, brought this game to life. So just a single goal between the teams as the third quarter gets underway. So first goal scored from open play from Daniela Moya. England seemed to go to sleep on defence. The ball was straight through and she deflected it tamely into the goals. But England responded about a minute later through Gemma Jones from a very good open play goal. And then we had the short corner variation by Lorena Galvan, then scored for Argentina. So, 2-1 up. Amanda Billington is off now. Did also save a penalty stroke from Argentina. She saved Jerry Codd's penalty stroke. But Argentina was still able to find that second goal. Good turn here from Moya. Isolated though, so smashes it across. Looks for Galvan. Falls kindly for Argentina. It's loose at the P-spot. And England scramble and somehow manage to win the free hit. Argentina coming right out. Go for the long ball. Cod cleans up for Argentina. And finds Torres on the right hand side. Nice little link up with uh, Carrizo. Infield goes to Aguirre, although her pass to Parodi. Goes through the legs and over the sideline. Big ball again for England. So it's a definite ploy from England to uh, apply the long ball and try and catch Argentina at their own game. Because we've seen in that first half, Argentina employed the long ball. They tried to find Paolo Lasso with plenty of speed running into those little gaps. And it's worked a plum. For uh, Argentina, big ball again from England, loose inside the circle. Rauco just settles things and gets it to Paulosa, who smashes it forward. Ryan Crisp, though, makes the interception on the 23 yard line. Goes infield and big step up from uh, Argentina's number 14, Torres. She now goes on a bit of a run and then again identifies there's nobody with her. So happy to hold it up is uh, Torres as Aguirre is in support. 1-2 between the two of them. Torres, nice little roll. And then finds on the left-hand side, Rauco. But nobody in the uh, point of attack for Argentina. And England come away with it. Foot race. Galvan wins it over Day. Galvan eliminates the nice stick work from the Argentinians as they come now down the left-hand side. And for the clearance hit. So it's such a good passage of play by the Argentinians. Skillful as the way they just transfer the ball into the midfield and out again. So, as you say, the crash ball at times has worked for the Argentinians, but it hasn't worked for, for England. England too hasty to play that long ball. They've got so much firepower out right. So many good players up front. And they just seem to rush that final pass as they approach the 23 meter area of Argentina. Mayo gets the free hit quickly. Up comes Ryan Crisp, puts her under pressure. Mayo continues to fight and maintain possession as she gets into the circle. And but for a fortune there for Argentina, Mayo was looking for the foot of Ryan Crisp, got past her and then just dribbled onto the foot of uh, Combs. So Argentina, early in the uh, third quarter, will have a short corner. So that's pretty soft giveaway there. I've liked the way Torres has hold it, held the ball up, combined with Moya. So Argentina just showing good signs. They've used Galvin well in the midfield. And now it's Cod at the top of the castle. She takes it on the stick, fires it in. Good save. Rebound comes in. Another good save. 
And the real award is given Uri Fent, the new keeper for England, as Billington's been rested for the second half. Argentina have got to get this uh, injection right from Moya if they are to uh, get a good shot off. So Moya steadies herself again. It's Cod at the top. Galvan is on the left-hand side. Cod with a shot. Look for the deflection. It doesn't touch anybody. And Cod will get it straight over the top of the circle into the bottom corner. And Argentina go 3-1 up in the final. What a direct strike from Jerry Codd. And with sheer emotion, she drops <laughs> to the floor as she had missed that penalty stroke earlier in the match. And that opportunity to score for Argentina, but now she does so in emphatic style with a magnificent strike low to the right of Olifent. Direct strike. And Argentina are now 3-1 up in this final. Now one wonders how much uh, emotion was inside Cod when she missed the penalty stroke. I think we all saw it come out as soon as she scored. She just dropped to her knees, arms aloft. And she grabbed that goal from probably feeling that she's now made amends for that earlier miss. So I'm coming away on the left-hand side, Rossetto for Argentina, cut out though by Ryan Crisp. England backs against the wall now. They've got it all to do. Big ball to the far side, Stockford. Got a bit of space to work with. Strikers, good movement by them. But disrupted by Argentina. Moya comes away with it, decides that Parodi is the better option. And Parodi goes for the long ball. But probably the first time that we've seen a long ball and not seeing Paulesso running after it. I've been watching her. She's actually come down deep into defense as well now. At 2-1, she's been doing a lot more defensive work than hanging up high. And it's Lloyd who tries to hit that byline and win something for England. Still England ball on the left-hand side. Deep in the Argentinian territory now. Now they just move it back and look to play right. Ryan Crisp out here, wide. Ball gets played long down the line. And Bond was behind Rosetto. But there was, from the ball from Ryan Crisp, it just it wasn't 100% pass to Bond. Nice work by Moya to win possession and then ride a tackle from Combs. Rosetta with a sulky footwork and stick work, but Combs gets the secondary tackle in. And Argentina, they've just got to keep doing what they're doing. So out it goes to Cod. Possession is key. Gomez. To the right hand side is Carrizo. Infield she comes. Galvan afforded a bit of space, can pick a pass, although a miss hit gives it to England. Bond on the right hand side. She's got Cod close by her. Bond rolls to the right, comes in field, and a good tackle by Cod for Argentina. The so Cod just did so well to. Hold that line so nicely and just force Bond to go onto a front stick rather than going on the outside and hit the byline. God, big ball. Cut out by Clap in midfield. Clap looks long to Day who turns. A little bit isolated. Just feel like the wind's been taken out of the English sails. Just seem to be flat. They've got to find something. Go long again, and it's a 50 50 ball in there, and they'll just lose possession, work back, and chase blue shirts. 
certainly not helping England's cause, just hitting possession away and allowing Argentina to basically boss the game. Because they certainly have had the upper hand in midfield. So when Argentina do get the ball in midfield, if England do step a player up, Argentina are able to quickly get the ball past that first defender in behind them. And then England are going to recover. And it's that recovering, that working back to help out when the first tackle is missed. That costs England. And they've got to work back now again as Moya comes through the uh, midfield. The rides with two tackles. It's still there. It's for Galvan. Galvan. And it comes off the upright as the keeper, Olifen, tries to clear the ball. It hits the upright. And fortunately for England, Ryan Crisp is there to get the ball away. Well, Olifen almost cleared it into her own goal box. Turn comes, reverse stick, and just flashes wide. Came off the post there, and as you say, Ryan Crisp did well to come on the cover defence. I think that probably would have been the most bizarre goal of the tournament had that gone in off the stick of Oliphant in a way to uh, try and uh, clear the ball away. Again, a case of England winning the ball and then just hitting it upfield more in hope than anything else. It gives possession straight back to Argentina and Cod. Holds us into midfield. Aguirre is cut out by Bond and now it's loose. Good fight for it as Jones does win the free hit. Gets it going quickly does Jones. Clap. Nice little first touch for Bond. She's got uh, Leonard with her. Leonard in possession now. Tries to go around. Gomez continuing to fight his Leonard. Clap. Into the circle. Cut out again by Argentina. That's a bit of a dangerous one to clear that ball across the face. And a wild swing from Aguirre. Catches clap across the legs. And uh, the umpire awards the short corner to England. And Susie Clap didn't even realize it. So, so much better build up play as we were saying. The ball going up front to Gemma Jones. Them carrying it into those high lying areas up to the, the D. Finding connections rather than just trying to smash it into a well-aligned Argentinian back four. And there they find themselves getting a corner. So five minutes to go in the third quarter. Two goals the difference. England with an opportunity here at the short corner. Clap is on the far side. Jones doing stopping duty. Goes to Jones. Ryan Crisp with a shot. Takes a deflection. And misses wide. So long corner it is. Good work by the first wave. Torres to get herself in the mix. And chase that one down as Clap gets it going quickly. Up steps Cod. Looking to make the tackle is Cod. Keeping Clap's head down. Ball in. Cleared away by Galvan. A good strike at the top of the D. But brilliantly charged down. Does get a deflection and all anything can happen with a deflection. Brave defending by the Argentinians. So build up play for England. Just under four minutes of this quarter remaining. Aguirre just wins ball, slows it down. Cod just happy to slow things down and look to clear her lines. Which she does. And Payolasa is on it. On the counter, gets around the keeper. She's got an acute angle, she flicks. And Willie Fint comes back nicely after being beaten. She worked back to her near post and was able to make the save. And there's that danger. For Argentina's long ball, Paulasso, plenty of speed and perhaps too much speed on that occasion. She did well to get around Oli Fent, but the ball evades her a little bit. But Argentina continuing to come now as Galvan looks to eliminate the first defender, which he does brilliantly into the circle. 
Advantage is there for Argentina. Mayo. Or at least Moya cannot win the short corner. So England scramble it away somehow. I don't know if you really want advantage there. I think you just want them to blow the corner. This stage, you 3-1 up, get the corner, go 4-1 up. Again, long ball played in. Too early, rather than retaining possession in wide area, no pressure, coming on the arc, look to connect with your high-lying strikers, set something up. Big ball again from Cod. Ties the little deft touch, does uh, Galvan, comes off the foot of uh, Ledbetter. So, Argentina can get some numbers forward. And uh, already, Argentina playing at the clock. Slowly making their way upfield, slowly retrieving the ball. There's still a quarter to go after this one. As Cod smashes it forward once again. And uh, Paolo not quite uh, in time on this occasion. I really feel in this game so far is that England have almost played into Argentina's hands. Argentina have congested the middle. They've got good runners in the midfield. But they've also used the high-line striker to good effect. England have just rushed all that possession they've got. All that possession they've had, may I say. Now good possession again. Jones looks for Bond on the 45 ball. It's closed down by Aguera. And we're going to the final minute of this third quarter and World Cup final here in Cape Town. The over 45s World Cup final. And that sort of sums up the half England have had. The wayward pass, Rosetta to Galvin. Galvin loses it. Bond comes back. Quick ball for Bond. She looks for support. Ryan Crisp out wide. So Ryan Crisp again looks for the crash ball. Card just defends. Final eight seconds now. Turn comes from Clap. Tries to find spice, a space in behind that midfield. So after the third quarter, it's Argentina three, England one. Join us after the break for the fourth quarter.
So we're about to start the fourth quarter. Argentina, 3-1 up. The penalty corner goal from Jerry Card made it 3-1 in the last quarter. Bell on the ball out wide. Fires into Jones. Jones on the turn, looking to find connection. Burns. And Jones on the quick ball. Still isolated. And a short corner is awarded. Rosetta just doesn't retreat after conceding the hit. Jones plays it into her, and it's a penalty corner. So this is the time now. England need to hit back. Still lots of time on the clock. So it looks like Stockford is coming to the top of the D for England. Don't be surprised on the short ball to clap, Murray. And you're right, you called it. Here it comes. Comes in. Reverse stick. The reverse stick hit comes in from Bond. The save is made by Arnold. And it comes with Bond's foot. Well, that was a good chance. England sense is now or never. High press comes from McCabe and Bond and Burns up front. The bell now, quick hit to Jones. Jones finds McCabe. Better short ball comes into Burns. Burns on the ball. Still got it. Oh. Fires in with a reverse stick pot. Just wide. So, oh. two chances in one minute. How costly all those misses be at the end of this 15 minutes that's left in the women's over 45 final. How costly is that going to be? Will it cost England as now through the middle comes Moya for Argentina. Goes to the right, takes a massive tackle from Lloyd, rides it beautifully. And it will be a short corner on the other side. So the perfect transition from defense into attack by Argentina. Yeah, Moya was just looking for that, wasn't she? She knew she wasn't <laughs> going to go all the way. Just held it up nicely and then just moved the ball into the body. And I think their card has been given for that tackle. Yeah, but late, I think the uh, far side uh, umpire was uh, just trying to figure out what the number was. She was, seemed as though she was always intent on giving the card. She just didn't have a clue which uh, player it was. So got the call from the co-umpire. And it is that tackle from Lloyd that sees her sent off for the next two minutes in this game to Argentina. It is Cod again at the top of the circle. Two castle set up though as Aguirre takes up a position on the far side. Comes short for Cod. Lays it off to Galvan. And a brilliant save from uh, the English. Looked as though as Combs made the save on the far post. Cod, big ball into the circle, comes off the foot of Jones, still there for Argentina though. Moya, good stick work, but equally good tackling, or at least so I thought, from Combs perhaps. It was the earlier indiscretion, the earlier advantage, so nothing there for Moya and the umpire giving the short corner. Yeah, I thought Combs was, was knocked over there. But there was an infringement early on just before that. So maybe that was advantage. So, do they go to Cod again or do they go on the variation to Galvin? To 
flicked well from that little slip to her. Just saved off the line from England. God, a bit slow for her. Oh, what save. a good save. And you can see what that meant to Olifant. Well, she gets the toe of her boot to that, but she was just so well balanced when she made that save. She comes out quite a far way out of her goals and just makes a proper telling save. Able to open the boot as well and force the ball out wide. The Guida with the restart. Ball played in by Ruka. 16 yard hit. England the ball. Jones to Bell. Bell under pressure from Moya. Moya felt she had done enough to get the hit. McCabe can't gather. Gomez just under pressure on a reversed stick. They're still able to come out of there and win a hit. Cod, little touch from Bell. Ball is up in the air. A little kick from Moya. Bell. Clap. Clap again, looking for support out wide. Bell is wide. She needs to carry now. She needs to connect. And they do with McCabe Much better out on this. the wide. Much better play. It's what we called for a little earlier in the game, rather than these smashes into the D. Well, that's much better from England. That is what they've uh, done all week long. That is what got them into the final. Those little in and outs, first touches, good little link-ups, short passes between players. And all of a sudden, they get to the final and they go for something that uh, they haven't really done all week. Let's play the long ball, hit and hope. And when you see those little short passes, first touches, England look very dangerous when they do that. So, Manduti's come on, the number three for Argentina. And Pailosa, who has been dangerous up high today, has a little breather. Bell. On the turn. Going to contact, but turns out of it again. Pressure from Moya. McCabe. McCabe to Burns. Burns wins the ball. The umpire says illegally. So we under nine minutes left in this World Cup over 45 final in Cape Town. There are teams celebrating all around the pitch here. With some have won gold, some have won bronze. <laughs> some have won the drinking contest. <laughs> some have won absolutely nothing, but it's been an amazing event. They've represented their countries here in Cape Town and they've enjoyed every minute of it. So Ryan Crisp transfers ball. The reverse stick shot comes in, dealt with easily by Argentina. And Aguera is just happy to hit it out, clear the lines, regroup, get those defensive lines right. It just seemed as though after that uh, few short corners that uh, Argentina had, They've just decided to sag. They've just decided, that's enough for us. Two-goal cushion. We can handle it from here. Let's just sit back 
and uh, hang on for as long as we can. England had those two chances early on in this quarter and it needed, they just needed to score early on and give themselves 15 minutes to get that equaliser. They've had plenty of possession. I'd imagine they've dominated possession in this game. Just squandered some possession high up the pitch. Aguirre with a free hit. Galvan, nice little turn from her, getting the ball across her body, running it into a bit of space, though she is uh, isolated. So up comes uh, Farias, although Galvan tries to go on her own, she's per foot burns. At least she's put Bond uh, flat on her back. But uh, the sideline made a fantastic tackle on Galvan just after that movement. So England with Ryan Crisp. This is where she's dangerous. A little bit of space on the right-hand side. Tries to get it through. But uh, Rauko makes the uh, interception. And Jones just hands the ball back to Argentina, much like England have done in that second and that third quarter. Winning possession, but then giving it back to Argentina straight away. So Galvan now, big ball forward, looking for uh, Manduti and the uh, far side. But again, the sideline winning the race. Ryan Crisp now. Good quick ball to Jones. Little one-twos now again. She needs to come in on the 45-degree angle. Burns runs away, unfortunately. McCabe now comes to help. Ball gets fired into McCabe. Runs off a stick onto the front stick of Cod. Moya. Moya who's full of running and just wins the hit. Does well for Argentina. Cot settles, steadies the ship. Smashes it on the up, down the middle of the field. Ooh, Torres nearly won that. It was, had some space to run into. Crisp Jones. Finds the foot. Now, they need a quick run. McCabe, good run. Now another quick run. Oh, she's, it ball hasn't gone five meters. So, umpire says take it on the spot. Could have turned a decision the other way around in favor of Argentina, but doesn't. Clap under a bit of pressure from uh, Obregon. But uh, Clap wins it into the circle now. And a short corner. For England, a bit of a push in the back, says the umpire by Torres. And England have the short corner with about four minutes to go in this final. The Argentinians say, go to your co-umpire, ask her. A lot of pressure on the umpire here and the crowd, the Argentina crowd. So, Cod asking what happened there, what transpired. It did look like it came off an England foot. The umpire might say there was a push in the back. Well, the Argentinians to our right break into song. It's four minutes left. And in four minutes' time, they could be crowned over 45 world champions here in Cape Town. If this is the amount of noise the Argentinian fans are making now, what do you think will happen in four minutes' time if they manage to hang on? Ryan Crisp, game brilliant work from the uh, first wave, Torres, to break that one down. Brilliant and, uh, running at first wave by Torres. She gets rapturous applause from the Argentinian fans and supporters and fellow players down to our right. So Argentina are bringing on the reserve goalkeeper in Ramos, giving her some time in the final as Arnal makes her way off the field. And on the other side, England, during that short corner, have pulled their goalkeeper, sent on an extra outfielder. So with four minutes to go in the final, it's literally all happening.
Ryan Crisp, the right hand side, swings it to the middle. Chance fair for Burns, it just spills over a stick. And a chance goes a begging for England. Three and a half minutes stand between Argentina and going home with a gold medal and a trophy. Three and a half minutes for the South Americans to begin the party for us here at Heart of LA and for Argentina to be crowned the world champions in the over 45 division of the Masters World Cup. Intercepted by number 13, Galvin. Into Moya. The tackle comes in. Umpires waves on Jones. Now on the counter attack for England. It's played in. Cod just steps in. Cooley takes ball for Argentina. And Moya wins the hit in the midfield. Two and a half minutes left. England have thrown everything at Argentina in this fourth quarter. They've stood firm and really stuck to their guns and their pattern and the tactics that their coach asked of them in this final. Aguirre. So two minutes it is on the clock. Argentina happy to play with the ball in the far corner. As they know that they now got to force England to work the ball from there. Get it across the field. England now through Leonard. Big carry from Leonard down the right hand side. She's got uh, Gomez with her. Gomez gets the stick in to disrupt it. And wins the hit. Does Gomez. Scott now just plays to the clock. Takes the time. Ryan Crisp with the interception. Jones, Ryan Crisp, that combination has done really well for England. Cut out by Galvan. Into the corner she will go. McCabe and Leonard are ready to pounce. But great stick work from Galvan to work her way out of that corner and then win the free hit as well. So we're down to the final minute. The Argentinian crowd are celebrating already. With less than 60 seconds on the clock, Murray, you've got a two goal cushion. I think Argentina have decided that it's time to party. It's going to seem as though the over 45s of Argentina will get retribution for the over 50s who went down to England. The crowd are really into it. 20 seconds left in this one. The gold medal is going to South America. The title of over 45 world champions will be Argentina. As the countdown begins, the Huta goes and it is joy and jubilation for Argentina. They are the world champions in the over 45 division at the Masters Hockey World Cup. But well, what a wonderful display from Argentina today. Soak that in, soak in the atmosphere. Because had we not told you that we were in Cape Town, you'd have thought that perhaps you would have been in Buenos Aires. Well, well done to Argentina, thoroughly deserved. The over 45 World Cup champions. I think the uh, Masters Hockey World Cup just shows you how much a victory for one of the teams are. The over 45s of Argentina have claimed the title of world champions.
but every single one of the Argentinian sides that are here in the men's and women's category through the various age groups are celebrating as if they have won a gold medal in this uh, tournament. Commiserations though to England, they've uh, certainly played their part in what has been a spectacle of a final. England have really put their hands up throughout the tournament and given us something to watch. Well done to England on securing your semi-final as now the sportsmanship is being shown by Argentina who uh, show some gratitude towards England and creates a bit of a tunnel for them much to the appreciation of the crowd on the side of the field and England will then return the favor for Argentina and this is what Masters Hockey is all about. It's not only about the hockey on the field, it's about what happens off the field as well. It is the bonds you make, the friendship that comes along with it. And yes, because it's tournament hockey, it is one side that will walk away with a gold medal around their necks. And the party can start for Argentina now. So England getting their silver medals from the president of the South African Hockey Association, Dion Morgan. And you can see that uh, there's not a wet eye on the side of England. There's no crying in disappointment that they couldn't get over the line. They are happy. There's smiles across their faces. They played in an epic final. They've uh, played their part to serve up what has been a remarkable tournament of hockey in the women's over 45 division. And when they went into the uh, semi-finals a few days ago, they went to it, into it as, uh, dare we say it, the underdog. They finished fourth overall. So just about getting into the semi-final and then they showed in that semi-final that they can mix it with the best in the world got themselves over the line got themselves a space in this final and it just came up on the day against a sign uh, against a side as argentina who on the day proved to be one step ahead Argentina is their turn led by captain Jerry Codd gets the gold medal from uh, 
the Saha president, Dion Morgan. Mariana Arnal gets her medal. And uh, each of the Argentinian players, one after the other, one smile is bigger than the next. And who wouldn't be happy? Who wouldn't be smiling from ear to ear when you've just been crowned a world champion? So as we await the moment for Argentina to lift the trophy, a few more medals to be handed out. Every single one of these Argentinian players have played their part throughout the week to get themselves into this final. They finished second in the pool stages, came through the semi-finals, earned their right to be in the final. And then in the final came up trumps over England. So it will be a massive party in the South American camp. Especially later on this evening. Perhaps when they head back to their hotel or even right here in the beer garden. And it's going to be a South American party. Now it's time has come for Dion Morgan to hand the trophy over to the Argentinian captain, Jerry Codd. And Argentina are the world champions in the women's over 45 category. We are fascinated by the mindsets and the habits that make individuals and teams perform at another level. Let us be your thought partners and transformational coaches. Are you part of a team and you are wanting to gain insight into what ingredients need to be in the mix to take your team to a whole new level of performance? Partner with us. We want to be your transformational coaches.